This is an example of one of the training videos in our FileMaker certification preparation course at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. This video is about the new record request script step. And before you skip this, there's a lot of things in here that you will really want to learn and master because uh, this certification process is not just about knowing one thing about a script step or calculation or feature. It's about knowing all the different ways that it can be used or not used and done in very odd scenarios. So let's get started. I've made a specific layout here for new record and I've got a picture of our relationship diagram. So if we pull that up, we can see that we have these four here and they're matching what is there. And the only difference that you can't see is in this relationship, we're allowing creation of records the others are not. So the naming convention may be not what you would do in this scenario. Employees 2 is based on employees, contact methods. This is the same table or same table. And then this one is company. So you may not have named it this way, but you need to be aware and know how to decipher and predict what can happen with these scenarios. So I left all of this here so that we can see uh, at a glance as we go through this. And I'm just going to go into layout mode here for a moment. I've got a portal and this one is based on employees. So I've got that in the tab and I have some buttons here that are go to related record and I put tool tips on all of these so that you can see uh, what is happening inside. So we put a tool tip on here. It tells you go to related records, contact methods, only related records, match current record, only uh, found and so forth. So this will tell you which table it's from. And I thought this was very interesting. I'd never seen this before, that that tool tip is not moving until I go to a different tool tip. Then it moves. If I go out and then it moves, but all of this is employees. If I go into contact methods, this portal is employees. So I thought that was uh, an interesting little tip that the tool tip may not move even if we pause and wait and wait, it's not changing. So I'll just denote these as we go. And each of these has a different scenario for this particular thing. Now we're talking about new record requests. So we'll just do that one first. And we have a button here that is just new record request. I didn't put a tool tip on that. And I also have a button here that is new record request. So let's just see what would happen. I'm guessing it's no big surprise if I click this button, what will happen to this number? Of course, it's going to go to four. So now we have an empty record. Same thing that happens when you click new record right here. But what if we are in a portal and let's go back to a record that actually has some information here we go what if we click this here because remember in here we have allow creation so we're going companies employees contact methods so if we do it in employees we don't have creation of records here but we do for contact methods so if i click this new record in an allow creation setting here for contact methods like this, what is going to happen? Is it going to add a record here? Is it going to add a record here? Is it going to do both? How is this going to work? Because if we have add a new record here, which you may notice right away, this is there's so much in this little diagram. In looking at the employees relationship, we have two employees, 
only one contact info for Rocket Raboon. But if we go to contact methods, which is what this is based on, this 444 is showing up for I am Groot. But back over here, it's actually assigned to Rocket Raboon. Now, this may be a somewhat review if you saw the relationships section for this particular uh, course where we went through a lot of this. But if you haven't seen that one, you'll want to go back and review that. So in just comparing these two, it's interesting why this 444 applies to I am Groot, but it has to do with this relationship. This tab is based on this table occurrence, but we're then going back to get to names from employees. So it's actually going back to the relationship that way instead of actually applying who this is. If you wanted to see who this was, you'd actually have to go to employees two. And now it's Rocket Raboon, employees two is here. So you're going from companies, which is what this table is on. You go to contact methods, and then you have to go to employees. If you go backwards, it gives you the wrong information, or at least not what you probably thought you would want to see. So if we are in this particular one, why do we have I am Groot here? And we have that we can allow creation of records. So is this a record or not? We have go to related records. So we'll go to this one and this is going to contact method. So if I click this, it goes to the 444 contact method. So we'll go back on the contact methods. What happens if I click this one? Is it going to go to a blank one? Is it going to go to, where is it going to go? We click it and nothing happens here. But if I type in here under allowed creation and I click out, it actually creates a new record. If I click this, then it goes to the allowed contact information. So we have this additional portal because of the allowed creation of records. So if I type in this, it creates a record. But what if I push this new record request? Will it create a record or will it not? So we're gonna click it. You can pause if you want to solidify your answer. So we're gonna click this and it created a record, but only in this company record. If we go back to the previous one that actually had this allowed, which was the last one that we created, you can see it is still the last one. It did not create an additional contact method. So placement of this new record request is very important. The same thing may happen with the delete record. This may be a good way to help you remember that new record in a portal is not uh, doing something with the portal because when you are in a portal, you have an option for delete record or delete portal row. So if we go into our layout and we just want to assign a single step, if we delete this and we type in new, we only have these options. If we type delete, we have the options of portal row or record. So you can't, you don't have a script step for new portal uh, record here. You would have to either use this allowed or even if we go in and let's just type in portal and see what we find. We have delete, we have go to portal, we have refresh portal. So in the past, we've gone to the last portal row and then set a field, but that we don't have a new portal row script step. So I hope that is fairly clear on that. And if we click delete portal row in this one, this is delete record. And this is delete portal row, which is over here as well. So we'll just go here. If we click this delete record, is it going to delete this or delete this? If we click this one, is it going to delete 
just this. That's probably pretty self-explanatory. And here our, our little guide tells us delete this one related record. So we're gonna delete that and it does. So we deleted a portal row, but we deleted that employee. That employee is gone now. And since we didn't have cascade delete, we still have this allowed. So our I am Groot went away because we clicked delete portal row, wanting to delete this allowed, but it actually deleted the employee. So now we have to add an employee, but we can't because we don't have allowed records. So we'll just go in here and oh, we're in contact methods. See how, how very odd this can get if we aren't paying attention to where this is. So this says go to contact methods instead of go to employees like I expected that it would, but because we have this contact method here, that's why it went to 444. So you don't just wanna to jump to conclusions. This one is actually go to employees. So now we are on Rocket and we will just create the I am Groot, but we don't have the company. We didn't make that the same way. So now we just have to copy this or we could use the command apostrophe and put that in as well. So now we are back to our two and it appears a little better only because we deleted the wrong one. So I'm, I'm pointing all these things out and you think, why would anybody make it this way? Well, you are gonna come across some very strange scenarios and how people designed things. And when you are quizzed, it's not going to be the perfect scenario. It's going to be messed up. You have to decide how is this going to work? So in each of these scenarios, you may want to just make your own sample file here and play around with these uh, options. This one is employees two. There's contact methods, there's employees two. So if we go to contact methods, we would go where? What, what would we expect to see if we go to that one? If we go to employees two, what would we expect to see? So each of these, and this is a mix and match, this one has employees two and employees two. This is contact methods. This is contact methods. So if we go to a related record, what are we going to see? I'm not gonna go through all of these, but if any of those seemed odd, then you really want to create this scenario in a solution and see if you can guess. And then I'll just show one other thing as we close this up. And that is if we use some global variable or global field, sorry. And notice we have these lines here that shows they're not indexed. And I basically duplicated everything uh, from that previous one. If we look at the relationship, you can see I just copied that whole thing and duplicated it so they're all the same. This one is allow creation of records. So if we have all of these globals here, what's gonna happen? See the difference on what we see here? You can still see information, but it's going to act differently because it is all of these ones and the local one. So if we go here to contact methods, you have to scroll all the way down. We still have this allowable entry. So when I make this new record, what's gonna be the information that shows up in the contact method record? Who is it gonna be John Smith? What's, what's it gonna have? So we'll just click out. So we've got this created one. So let's go to that contact method. We have allow global, but we have no ID in either one of these because that relationship was all through uh, the global ones. If we go back to here. So we, we created a record here because we had allow creation, but since it was an unindexed fields, it 
couldn't set those. So while it can be fun and you can see good information, be sure you know how it's going to act and what it's going to show when you play around with these portals and fields and just follow this path and these bars, whether it's normal or whether it has the vertical on it. So if that helps, if you're really confused, then that is a good thing. That's a good thing to know now that you need to play with this information and really master how these relationships work. Because if you can get this part down, so much of the rest of your developing will be very, very clear. And one last little note, this, this new record request that we have here is also, if you are in find mode, you have one find and we'll just put something in here. When we click this new record request, it's a new find request. And we can put something else in as soon as we cancel the find, we still only have five records. So if we go down here and we're in find mode and we're in this portal for new record, it's going to add a find request, not anything in the portal. That is the new record request script step and then some. I highly, highly, highly encourage you to play with this in your own practice solution so you can master how these connections work. But if you're ready to move on, we'll see you in the next lesson. I hope you enjoyed this sample from our FileMaker certification preparation course. Visit ProductiveComputingUniversity.com for more information about the certification preparation course and other training to help you save time as a FileMaker developer.